Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guitar Tuesday here on GarageBand and beyond. So we're going to continue the work here on my little SG from Epiphone. Um, if you did, didn't watch any of the other videos, just check them out. There's a bunch of them um, from the past. Uh, fixing the guitar neck, putting strings on it, and then plugging it in and figuring out that it didn't actually make any sound. So that's what we're here today uh, to do, is to open this guitar up and troubleshoot this problem. I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to be something really easy, and I'm pretty sure that it is going to be something easy. So I'm just going to put it down here on the bench, and uh, we're just going to start opening this guitar, and uh, let's find out what the hell is wrong with it, okay? Oh, thank God. Okay. Yay. It was an easy problem. It's an easy fix. Um, okay. Let me just take this camera off the stand here. All right. So check this out here. Let's get you guys in focus. All right. Here's what you're looking at. <laughs> this is the cable to the input. Um, and uh, yeah, it is totally disconnected or the output from the guitar. Um, so yeah, it is completely disconnected. So um this is an easy repair, and so we're just going to get out the old soldering iron and connect the stupid jack to the stupid wire, and uh, I'll have a guitar that functions. All right, let's get my soldering iron out. All right, so um, this is actually a magnifying glass right here just because it's going to be way easier for you to see it. Um, I can't zoom in far enough. But anyway, um, soldering iron here. Got my soldering iron out. If you don't know how to solder, uh, you should learn how to solder because this stuff happens all the time to guitars so here's the wire that is uh, disconnected and uh, I you know did a little bit of cleaning on the wire itself with my wire stripper but nothing too detailed there to talk about so anyway let's just put this stupid thing back on All right, so I'm just gonna go through GarageBand. Um, so we know the cable's good. So I'm actually, this is really, truly the first time I'm plugging it in. Oh, it sounds good. <laughs> it works! A little out of tune though. Um, Let's just make a different guitar track here. A little less buzzy. Tune it up. That's it. So the switch is a little scratchy. If you have one of these switches, um, this is a pretty normal toggle switch. You find these on lots of guitars. When switches go dirty, um, you can do two things. <laughs> you can actually get your contact cleaner out. Um, but most of the time, if you just do this a bunch, just to clean the terminal off, just to scratch all the stuff. Does that look weird, me doing this on camera? <laughs> uh, all right, anyway, that's good. But otherwise, hey, hey. Uh, let's try it with that distortion tone and a little slide. Thank you. 
works. It's a success. And um, so now, so now you guys, let's discuss what needs to be done to this guitar. Because I don't really have a ton of clues. Um, I have, you know, I want to change uh, the electronics inside, you know, maybe some better components, uh, probably a switch. Um, I'm just going to have to do some reading. So if there's any stuff that you guys know about, like these Epiphone SG or, you know, the Les Paul, all this, these Epiphone guitars, they're pretty much the same electronically and internally. Um, if there's tricks and tips that you guys have, please leave it in the comment section below so I can check that out. One guy, and I, I forget who it is off the top of my head, but somebody recommended that I, because um, we were talking about changing pickups, and somebody said, why not put um, Rickenbacker style pickups in this, which I think is a pretty cool idea. Um, um, and so I'm sort of curious to see what you guys think about that. Maybe one Rickenbacker. I'm also a big fan of P90s, so I was kind of thinking about putting a P90, maybe one P90 and one Rickenbacker style. But on the other hand, I kind of like one of the purposes of me even owning this guitar is just to have something with humbuckers on it so I can get a high gain sound in the studio when I need a high gain guitar. Um, so if there's other humbuckers that you recommend, like maybe just like the regular American standard Gibson ones from the factory or something, I would, you know, they would definitely be an upgrade. Um, these ones don't sound too bad. Hmm? That's, that switch is still scratchy, I gotta get some. Contact cleaner. I'm almost out. Let's give it a little shot. Ugh. It is out. So yeah, a switch. There's not much to this switch, so it probably just needs to be cleaned. Wow, that is bad. In fact, I think the contact cleaner... <laughs> oh, the volume was turned down. Duh. That was a stupid mistake. <laughs> Still a little scratchy in that middle position, but um, better. That's some serious sustain for a cheap guitar. basically just sitting here watching me noodle on this guitar. So anyway, um, you guys, thank you for watching all my videos. Thanks for checking out Guitar Tuesday. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed making it. Um, that's it. Subscribe to the channel. Watch all these other videos that I've made. Check out all the other Guitar Tuesdays. They're going to be coming out every Tuesday, obviously. And then another video is coming out on Friday. Um, and they will be sort of recording and reviews and stuff like that. More normal GarageBand and Beyond stuff on Fridays. Um, but Tuesdays are Guitar Tuesdays, where we only talk about guitars. Because recording is cool, but guitars, ugh. I love, I love guitars. So, hope you guys do too. And uh, I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Peace. Other videos on Wednesday, which are pfft, stupid. <laughs>